Hey everybody, this is George Trombley from Japanese from Zero, and you're getting ready to watch Ask a Teacher 111. There is no 110. When I originally shot this video in 2013, uh, there was about a two month period where I didn't record anything, so the last one was 109, and I guess I mistakenly made 111. There is no 110. I searched for it in vain. It's possible that there was a 110, but I didn't record it. Sometimes that happened back in the day. Uh, so enjoy 111. It's actually uh, a really, really good one. Uh, I feel really solid about this. I don't like how my face looks, but the uh, answers are really good. And uh, just a little bit of trivia, the TV behind me, it's a whole new set for uh, from this point on. That's a 70 inch TV, but it looks small because of its positioning. And also I hadn't figured out yet how to go to the edge of the screen with the iPad connected. I figured that out much later. Anyway, enjoy, and just remember that if I ever mention websites or things like that, they might be gone now. And certainly, uh, a lot of these users no longer exist also. But enjoy, number 111, Ask a Teacher. And if you have any follow-up questions, I do look at the comments. Go ahead and post them down below. I don't answer everything, but I do look at them. Welcome to another Japanese from Zero Ask a Teacher Live, where instead of me setting the topic, you guys set the topic by asking me questions in Japanese, and I do my best to answer your questions. Rem wow, that felt like I was a little bit drunk right now. I do my best to answer your questions, and remember, there are no dumb questions, just my dumb answers, and right before this show started, I had the people in the chat room, uh, there was about 47 of them in there right now, they submitted their questions to me, and here they are. We have a lot. Let's get right to it. This is number 100. Oop, that's the wrong character. Wow, that is not the right character for this show. I'm sorry uh, I made this just about four or five minutes ago before the stream. Here we go. Uh, first question is from Matsendra. He says, the other day I watched a video on emphasis. He's talking about my video, Ego Egg. Uh, I, and it says, uh, I didn't say she stole my wallet, which based on how you emphasize could be, I didn't say she stole my wallet which implies she stole something else. And then there's, I didn't say she stole my wallet, which means she didn't steal your wallet, but someone else did. So basically in English, just by putting a different emphasis, you change the entire meaning of the sentence. And he wants to know, is it possible to do with things, uh, to do this, uh, similar things in Japanese? And my quick answer is, wow, yes, of course, stressing works in Japanese too, but I'd have to really think hard about something as cool as what we did in that Ego Egg episode. Uh, so instead of that, I'm going to show you something that I typically do uh, or s that has typically been a problem for me in the past. Uh, this one was the initial first time I had a, had a problem was this. You say to someone in Japanese, Kyo wa kirei desu ne. And you're just thinking you're being nice. You're like, hey, I'm just saying you look great today. Wow, well, you look great today. To the Japanese people, that wa is a stressor. It's like you're saying you look great today. Every other day, though, you were busaiku. You were ugly. But that's not what we mean, of course. But you know, girls, they're crazy in every country. So, don't say, Say, I don't have that on the screen, but this little wa right here will get replaced with a mo. So, which means, you're also pretty today. Now, here's a joke that I like to do because I'm that kind of a guy. I like to really twist people. I'll say to a girl, and you can do this. This is a way of changing the entire meaning of the sentence. You say to them, Kawaii desu ne. You're cute. Ready, ready, ready? Kawaii desu ne, kutsu ga. Now remember, because Japanese doesn't have, uh, because kawaii desu ne, the word des means you are and I am and he is and she is and it is, des covers all of those things. It's what we call pronoun neutral. Ooh, we don't like that phrase, but it's true. It doesn't matter, all the pronouns work with it. Des can mean you are cute and they are cute. But until I add this right here, which I'm skillfully covering, until that's in the sentence, it's just you are cute is assumed. But the minute I say, it means your shoes are cute. Wow, cute. 
your shoes is what you're doing there. And that's a way to change the entire meeting with a word coming after it. Sort of a cheat thing, but it's kind of maybe where you're going, I don't know. Thank you, that was a really good question. Maybe one day we'll, we'll revisit this and show you ways that the particles, a lot of times wa, changes where that stress happens. Thank you, next question. Next question is from Unko-kun, an unfortunate name. Uh, he says, I noticed mada and mata both have the meaning still in the dictionary. Is there a difference in when you should use either mada or mata to mean still? Wow, this is a good question. And for the life of me, I could not find anywhere except for the dictionary where mata means still, only mada means still. Let's look at it. Let's look where mada is used. You could say to somebody, mada suki desu ka? Do you still like me? Or of course remember because des is pronoun neutral, could mean do you still like my shoes? Could mean anything, right? Could whatever topic we were talking about, cats, dogs, and someone says, mada suki desu ka? Do you still like them? Yeah, yeah, mada suki desu. Yes, I do still like them. Or maybe uh, you were talking about some country you were going to go to, and then you found out that in that country, uh, recently there was a crime against a foreigner. And you might want to ask them, hey, mada ikitai desu ka? Do you still want to go? Because, you know, they they did that crime against foreigners from your country, whatever. You might, and then you would say, kitakunai, or hai, mada ikitai desu. Alright? Let's look at mata. So mata is not, in my book, doesn't mean still, it means again. So, uh, mata kimashita. He came again. Maybe you're talking about a cat that comes every day and, oh, he came again. Ah, mata kimashita. Or maybe uh, your wife is yelling at you and uh, one of the things she says to you is, mata? Again? I'm almost certain I've heard this multiple times from my wife. Mata? You did it again? Whatever it was, yes, I did it and I'm sorry. Ooh, wait a minute. Wow, this got a little bit freaky. Hang on one second. Doo -doo. Let me just change the size. Looks really good on the computer screen, not good on the iPad. There we go. Alrighty. Alright, so I put in a nice, long, advanced sort of sentence here for the people like Uncle Clune and Germs who are learning a lot and I think sometimes we give ex easy examples only on these Ask Teachers. So I gave this one uh, to show another use of matawa and it is jikan ga areba mainichi matawa sukunaktemo sanshu agomesai wow too bad I couldn't read my own sentence jikan ga areba mainichi matawa sukunaktemo shu mikkagan nihongo wo benkyo shita hou ga ii desu what this means is, uh, if you have time, every day, or at least three days a week, you should study Japanese. This matawa could be, of course, used in much simpler sentences. But matawa here, even though it's listed as and, and it is used as and sometimes to say uh, certain things, which I can't think of in a good example right now, but it's almost always in my usage used as or, or. All right, thank you for the question. Next question is from C-section or Caesarea. Oh, looks like I read that wrong. Caesarea. Caesarea, no offense intended, C-section. Uh, could you list some ending emphasis particles? Uh, yo, ne, and za. Wow, I haven't heard za. That's awesome, though. I like it. Uh, and then ECT. By the way, I just cut and paste these things. ECT, which I believe stands for Electric Controlled Transmission. Oh, wait, you mean etc. I'm sorry. I also think you mean ze for za, but that's okay. There are no dumb questions, just my dumb jokes about them. Uh, what they mean, what they mean. You know what I mean? What they mean, man. Uh, and the gender that uses them. Now, by the way, I... I make fun. I know there's a lot of people from a lot of countries learning here, but you gotta give me this, right? You gotta give me this. All right, let's do it. So let's look at a couple of these. Iku yo. So yo, you're gonna hear at the end of a verb, for example, or the end of a sentence. And does it really change the meaning of a sentence? No, it changes the nuance of the sentence. What does that mean? Nothing, nothing really, right? So for example, if I say iku, I'm going. If I say iku yo, 
If I said that to my kids, Ikuyo, hey, we're going. It's sort of just giving it a little bit more urgency, I would say. Right? But what if I'm upset? Ikuyo! Yeah, I'm going, all right? It kind of has that nuance now, right? I mean, typically, the way that it's said, with or without the yo, determines the nuance, really. But yo is typically described as an exclamation point or a way to show emphasis or a little bit more emotion. Ikuyo! Ikuyo! So ikusa! Ooh, ooh, sa, did you mean sa? Might have been sa. Cause I thought you meant ze, all right? Ze is an old school Japanese bebop high school, by the way, if you ever watched that old drama. This is pretty, you know, ikuze, let's go. These are where the rough guys talk, right? Ikuze. You might hear ikuzo also pretty much the same exact thing. These are really just different versions of yo. They do the same exact thing, ikuze. Iguze, Iguzo, just a rough way to think. Girls typically aren't going to say Zo and Ze. These are pretty rough. I wouldn't do it if I were you. And then I'm going to add this one. You have no, you'll hear at the end. This is just an informal way to make a question. For example, we know that Ikimaska means are you going, and that Ka makes the question. Ikimas means I will go. Ikimaska are. Am I going or are you going? It adds a question. Remember, because even this verb is pronoun neutral. If you've learned one thing that we're talking about today, it's that Japanese verbs are pronoun neutral. So when I say ikimas, it means I'll go or he'll go or she'll go. Matawa, he'll go. Matawa, they'll go. That's how I'm using matawa there also. Nice little combo that I'm running there. We need to have numbers on the screen. Boom, boom, boom. How many grammar questions can I put into one sentence? All right. So, iku no. Are you going? Iku no? Iku no? Are you going? Taberu no? Are you going to eat? Wakaru no? Do you understand? Your response could be this. It could be mm, mm, un, un, which means yes in informal. Mm, iku, I'm going. But if you add a no on the end of this, now this sort of really gets dramatic, I think. Iku no. I always, to me, I always remember. Remember, I'm going to talk about this later, but teachers have opinions, and a teacher's answer to any question that you ask them is based on their life experience. We're going to talk about that in a second. When someone says, ikuno, I never would say, ikuno, all, all by itself. Mm, ikuno, yeah, I'm going. I would probably say, mm, ikuyo, yeah, I'm going, right? It shows confidence in the statement. Mm, ikuyo, yeah, I'm going, no matter what. Ikuyo. But I wouldn't say, mm, ikuno. That's just sad. Ikuno, ashita. I'm going. But does the meaning really change? No. It still means you're going. Here's an interesting thing. That no gets shortened into un. You could say iku no da. Now when you say iku no da, iku no da, now you're showing confidence. Iku da. Iku da. I'm going. But what if I put a little question mark on that? Like a, not a question mark, but if I said it in this way. Ah, ikunda. So you are going. This is very dramatic. You're going to see this in dramas. Ikunda. Naruhodo. Right? All right. You can make it a question. Ikundesu ka? This is really interesting. It's sort of a thing that Japanese does. They take this informal ikuno, make it un, add desu ka. Now it's sort of quasi polite. Ikundesu ka? It's just, it's. Casual and polite at the same time. Ikun desu ka? Hai. Ikimasu. Could be the response. Hai. Ah. Iku yo? Yeah, I'm going. All sorts of things. In the end, the verb is the most important thing. And I've talked about this before, but you really can't learn some things. You just have to figure them out as you use them. I almost feel we're very close to this being one of those things. All right. Thank you for the question. That was really a really good one. I enjoyed talking about it. Next question is from Sordidus. Sordidus. Sortitis, it's a sort of disease that you can get. Um, it's a person who constantly has to sort, sortitis. Uh, he says, what's the difference between shoganai and shikatanai? Just nuance? Mm, seems like somebody knows what I was getting ready to say. I'm gonna give you the actual answer, but uh, I wanna say thank you because I never really looked up the difference. 
I've always said they're the same, but I didn't actually know, and I did research it and found out that they are. Let's show you why shoganai and shikatanai both mean it's hopeless or nothing can be done about it. Let's look at it. Let's look at the first word, shio. Now, I understand that it's shoganai. Let's look at it again. It's shoganai. Do you see it? Right there, shoganai. It's a little yo, okay? But here we're talking about a big yo. So it's not sho, it's Shio. Now, Shio means specification, but it also means way and method. And what happens is you're really saying Shio Ganai. Shio Ganai, but that's been shortened over time to become Sho Ganai. Oh, there's nothing you can do about it. And look at the other word Shikata, which literally means the way to do, the way of doing something. Shikata Ganai, there's no way to do it. Also means it's hopeless. So the meaning is the same. That's your answer. Thank you for the question. Next question is from hidden name or hidden name. Little like extra D in there really makes it hard to read. Um, do shokai video, I'm um, sorry, do, do jiko shokai, which means self introduction, do jiko shokai videos, I'm going to add that word videos, uh, sent to you need to have, actually, I'm going to take away the word videos. Do jiko shokai sent to you need to have video? Or would audio-only ones be evaluated also? Well, I'm a little bit behind on doing uh, Jiko Shokai video analysis, which I do in the Japanese daily series, uh, and eventually plan to spin it off in some future millions of years from now. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's a good question. I would say no, please include video. But if you're very, very shy, or if there's some crazy medical reason why you can't show your face, uh, you know what? Use a hand puppet. If you don't have hands, uh, wow, I, I don't even know how to deal with that, but maybe you could use a stick puppet uh, with your feet, or you could have someone else just do like a little puppet, like in the camera while you talk. You know, some effort, you know, something that I can look at and laugh at will be fine. Uh, you would have seen uh, a while back, Mr. Crisk, Yes Japan member, uh, did a sock puppet, which was phenomenal. And... If you can, do a little bit of a high-pitched voice for those. Those are more fun that way. Thank you. And if you'd like to submit one, you can submit it to yesjapan.com slash upload. You know what? I'm up for anything. As long as it gets uploaded, let's see what we got. Keep them short, like about a minute or 30 seconds. All right. Ooh, my gosh. Another slide. Hang on. It has gotten crazy. Let me fix it. Let's see if I can get to it. Oh man, there we go. All righty, this next question is from Jap Mikey. He said, this is a very, very long one, so bear with me, I'm gonna read it, but it's a really, really good question. Today, my Japanese teacher told me that there is a distinction between adding nikui to the must stem and saying koto ga muzukashi. And he gave some examples, i nikui. Hard to say, and iu koto ga muzukashi, saying it is difficult. She said, nikui is more for when it's hard for you personally. Like you don't really want to do it. Whereas, koto ga muzukashi is more for ability. Like it's actually difficult. It's a difficult thing to do. You said in the past that anything anyone tells you about Japanese is their opinion. And... Seeing how this is hers, what's yours? Wow. Um, I love this question because it shows me that you are paying attention and strangely enough, the thing that you've remembered is that even my opinion is just an opinion. I can be wrong and I have had arguments with Japanese professors at colleges where I strongly believe I was wrong and they strongly believe they're wrong or right. Wow. Uh, where we both disagreed, and eventually in the end, I convinced them to believe my method. Or I either browbeat them. I'm not sure. Maybe they just eventually agreed, so I would shut up. But I have had discussions with Japanese people where after I show them the facts, I've proven myself right. And also, many times, I have been proven wrong that my opinion is wrong. Or we don't come up with consensus. It happens. So, is your teacher right here or wrong? That's not what you're asking. I'm going to say one thing you have to realize about a teacher especially one that you're paying to learn from, they can't not answer you. 
So your teacher, if she's asked this very difficult question of what's the difference between koto ga muzukashi and something something nikui, uh, I would say, guess what? She has to answer you. And that's a damn good answer. I like it. Is it true? I don't... I'm, I'm iffy on it. Because of the following thing. Let's look at it. You no ga, you no ga muzukashi. This is great. You take any verb, you add no ga, oh, uh, or koto ga, you no ga, or you koto ga muzukashi. And you're literally saying, saying it is difficult. Saying it is difficult. Very simple. Or you do the shorter version, and I want you to notice one thing. Look at this kanji right here. Muzukashi. This is the kanji for muzukashi. And I want to point out, in your question, you can barely see it, but right here, you have inikui not in kanji. Okay? Now look at inikui in kanji. Remember? Remember this? Remember this? Ready? Boom. Same kanji. Nothing changes. How could the meaning be that much different? Right? Again, it could just be that she's exactly correct. But if I said to you, uh, yari ni kui desu yo. It's hard to do. It could mean, yeah, it's hard, difficult for me. But I could also be saying it's a hard thing to do. I don't have to say, waz I don't have to waza waza. I don't have to go out of my way to say, yaru no ga muzukashi desu. Because no one is paying that much attention when you're speaking. No one is thinking, oh, well, wait a minute. He said yari ni kui or i ni kui. So it must be hard for him, but, but maybe it's not hard for me. But you know what? Let me ask you a question. If I said to you, you no ga muzukashi, it's hard to say, isn't that also an opinion? Isn't that also somebody's idea? It might not be hard for you. For example, my Korean friends always tell me the Korean that I'm saying is easy. And then when I say it, it's very hard. And you guys that are beginner Japanese people say, oh, this Japanese is hard for me to say. Well, no matter how you say it, it's easy for me though, right? And it will eventually be easy for you. So I would say, and just to give you an example, I gave another one here. Tabe ni kui. Tabe ni kui desu. Hard to eat. And we have one more question, I believe. Thank you. All right, next one is from Paridolia. Wow, this is a hard... Paridolia. Wow, I do not know. Hmm, I'm not sure if that's an idol in there. I don't know. All right, well, the question is, I often see conjugations attached to the te form of a word, like matete or matte nasai. How is this different from just the normal command forms? Wow, there's a couple things happening here. So I don't have any examples, but let's just think about it. Matsu, the verb to wait. Matte, like in chotto matte, means wait. But if someone says matete or matteite, it really doesn't change the meaning. Matete and matteite are both the ongoing present tense form. So you're literally saying be waiting. What's the difference between wait and be waiting? It's the same thing. All right. Matete might sound a little bit softer instead of Matte. Matete. Just kind of wait instead of wait. So I would say it softens it. But this other one, like you have mite nasai. So you could just say mite, look at it. Or mitete, be looking at it. Right? It, if you're looking at, if you want someone to watch a video, you could say mite. But if you want them to continue watching, you could say mitete. Right? I think that that's a valid difference there. But this mite nasai. You wouldn't want to say to your friends because it's rude. Mite nasai, this nasai format is when you're talking down to children. Mite nasai, you watch that. Yari nasai, do your homework. But it's still in the end, both they're both still command forms. Just be careful with the nasai. The other ones are all pretty much the same. All right, that is it. Thank you for watching. YesJapan.com, Ask a Teacher. See you next time. Bye-bye.